Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be processing the M31 Galaxy, also known as the ever-famous Andromeda Galaxy. So let's not waste any time, let's get straight into the tutorial. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to go to our home button and we are going to set our M31 Galaxy as our home directory. If you do not, it will not process the correct files and you'll end up with an entirely different deep sky object. So go ahead and click M31 and press open. Next, you want to go to your preferences and make sure your bare information for files header is available. Uh, make sure that it's checked so that if perhaps uh, you don't have the correct Bayer mosaic pattern set. It will automatically convert to the correct one based on the data of your image. So uh, make sure you have that selected. Uh, for your image processing, you're going to go to star processing and make sure you have Starnet star removal uh, installed on your serial program. If you don't know how to install that, you can make sure you go and check out the uh, video I have on the channel on installing Starnet into serial. Uh, one more thing in scripts. For OSE preprocessing with Drizzle, that means you need to be able to have your Darks, Bias, Flats uh, files all available for you to stack together. And what this Drizzle will do is it will basically break apart the pixels for you to get more detail in your image. But you can only use that if you have your Darks, da, sorry, Darks, Bias, and Flats files. Now, your OSE preprocessing without Dark, that means that you can use your Bias and Flats and not use any Darks files while stacking with your Lights. OSC preprocessing without dark bias and flats means you don't need dark bias and flats. You can just stack your lights files. OSC preprocessing without flats means that you can uh, stack it without any. Uh, let's see, without. Sorry, you can stack your darks, but you cannot use any flats or biases with this script. Uh, again, with these scripts, if you do not have them installed, you can check out how to install that in the serial installation program. Uh, sorry, a video that I also have on the channel, so make sure you check that out if you don't have that ready. If you do have everything ready, uh, I'm going to be using Dwarf 2 data, and we're, I'm only going to be using Lights files, so we're going to see how good this comes out. Now go to your scripts, and we're going to run the OSC preprocessing without dark bias or flats, because I, again, I only have uh, Lights files, so go ahead and click that, and we'll come back to when it is complete. Okay, as you can see, the uh, stacking is now complete. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to this open button here. We're going to click on result.fit and we're going to hit open. And you should see this kind of image. You can see the core of the galaxy right there. Uh, but in order for us to be able to see the rest, we're going to go to here. We're going to click auto stretch. And to get rid of this green color, we're going to press the link image. Now we're going to go to image processing and start processing our image. One thing I did notice before is that it does have quite a few streaks here uh, in the image that we're going to want to try our best to get rid of. But this was probably caused by the fact that uh, the data that was taken was actually taken around very close to a street lamp. So it is possible that there was some glare on the lenses there, but we can do our best to get rid of that. Uh, so go to image processing. We're going to go to background extraction. And we're going to bump up the samples here. And we're going to hit generate. Now, as you can see, that actually landed on some parts of the galaxy here. So we're going to reduce some of the grid tolerance and hit generate again. Again, that was not quite enough. So we're going to reduce it some more. It's one. Generate again. And as you can see, it reduced it a whole, whole lot. So that should be just about enough. But I did notice it's still on the little bit of this elliptical galaxy. So in order to get rid of these selections, just go ahead and right click. Just like this, right click, right click, right click. And this should be good. So we're going to click compute background. As you can see, it evened everything out perfectly. We're going to hit apply. Next, we're going to go to image processing, remove green noise and hit apply. We're going to hit close there. And now we're going to save this because we don't want to lose our progress so far. We're going to go to image processing again, color calibration, photometric color calibration. And for here, image parameters, we're going to type in M31 and we're going to hit find. 
you can see it's all right there. Uh, for the focal length, you're going to do get metadata from image. If it does not work automatically, you just go ahead and type in the focal length for your telescope and the pixel size in regards to your uh, camera sensor. Uh, for the Dwarf 2, it has a re resolution of 5.973. And we're just going to click this to get the coordinates there. We're going to unclick down, down sample and we're going to hit OK. As you can see, it rotated the image. The uh, photometric color calibration is complete. It succeeded. However, I did notice sometimes if it does not work, all you have to do is just crop your image a little bit, uh, run through it again. If that doesn't work, just go ahead and press the down sample button and leave that on. Apply it again. Then it should work. Uh, but most of the time, it should work just the way that we did it. Uh, now we're going to go and we're going to save this now that it is calibrated. And we are going to crop our image just a bit because we do not want these outside artifacts inside of our image. So let's just go ahead and crop it just like that. And we're going to hit crop and we're going to hit save. Next, we're going to go to image processing again and we're going to go to our star processing. Now we're going to do a star net star removal and pre-stretch the linear image. We're going to switch this to linear and we're going to hit execute. Okay, as you can see, it is now done. We're going to go to auto stretch here. And there is our starless image. So let's go ahead and try to process this now. Go back to linear. We're going to go to image processing and we're going to go to generalized hyperbolic stretch transformations. Let's bump this up to 100. Hit enter and just click on the middle here. Let's drag this over to the side and start dragging up the stretch factor. Just like that. We're going to drag it up a little bit more. As you can see, it's kind of a lot. So we're going to kind of lower the darkness here. So we're going to hit apply. We're going to go up here and go to linear stretch, black point. And we're going to drag up the black point to get that black background back in. Let's keep it just like that because we don't want to lose a lot of the uh, background. Not Sorry, not the background, but the galaxy dust. We're going to hit apply. We're going to go back to generalized hyperbolic stretch and we're going to drag it up just a tiny bit more. And then hit apply on that. We're going to hit close now. We're going to go to image processing, color saturation. We're going to drag this up just like that. Uh, we don't want the background factor getting affected too much, but we're going to lower it down so that it can get coloration on the entire galaxy. Hit apply. We're going to go back to image processing again, color saturation, and drag it back up again. Now you can see it's a bit too much, so we're going to lower it down. We're just going to mess around with this just a little bit more, because we honestly don't want it to be super saturated. We're going to hit apply. We're going to go to image processing now, go to color calibration, to do a proper color calibration, because honestly we don't want a lot of that orange coloration in there. And I apologize for the sound of the cat. We're going to select this here. Use current selection, background neutralization. We're going to select the galaxy now, just like this. And use current selection and hit apply. As you can see, it kind of added more of a bluish tone. We're going to hit close here. We're going to actually undo that because I don't really like how it bloated out the core there. Undo that. We're going to go back, color calibrate it again. Select the background. Background neutralization. And now select this part. Just like that. We're going to use current selection and hit apply. Hit close here. And that's just a little bit better. Now we're going to bump up the saturation some more. Color saturation. Drag this up. Again, that was too much. We don't like all that hot pixels there. It's honestly just a lot of trial and error. We're going to hit apply here. And we're going to save this now. Now, this is honestly the best that we can get, I'd say, with the Dwarf 2 data without using uh, AI programs such as Fit Scrubber or programs in Pix and Sight that use artificial intelligence to fix up the image. Um, we're going to go to image processing again. We're going to go to our star processing and we're now going to add the stars back in here. So go to star recomposition. We're going to click here, add our stellar result.fit file and add our star mask result.fit file. We're going to drag up these stars here.
honestly we do want a lot of stars in this image because with the more stars it truthfully looks better so we're gonna do that and we're gonna drag up the stretch factor a little bit more here it's way too much drag up the black point some it's again too much and to lower the stretch factor some more there we go we're gonna apply that we're gonna apply the stars in here we're gonna hit close and here is our image Let's go ahead and save this. We want to kind of save it as a PNG file, so save as a unique file. Okay, so here is our finalized image. As you can see, it came out quite nice. Unfortunately, we really weren't able to get rid of these uh, streaks here. Uh, one thing that you could do potentially to get rid of the streaks is in Google Photos, if you wanted to, you could press here and edit. You go to here, tools. No, I'm sorry. The settings here. Just drag out the contrast. That's one thing that kind of, as you can see, it fades it out. But it also fades out some of the details in the nebula you'd want to leave in. So that sometimes might not be the option. Another thing you could do is drag out the black point. But again, gets rid of the, uh, the stardust and the galaxy. Another thing you do is drag out the shadow. Drag that down. But it honestly all kind of has the same effect. As you can see... Uh, these are kind of just unremovable at a certain point in time. So uh, I suggest if you guys are going to do it, make sure you don't do it under a street lamp. But hopefully following this tutorial, we're able to get much better results than what I got. Uh, hopefully I can get some better data soon. And if you have a better telescope than what I have uh, that was able to take this picture, I'm sure your photos came out amazing. So. Uh, again, thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next video, which is actually going to be a tutorial basically explaining and running through the astro function of the Dwarf 2. So make sure you stay tuned for that. I uh, wish you all clear skies and have a good night.